Well, when they're making World War II comparisons to our current situation, that is certainly not good. We have media attacks on Trump, and we have a tattoo parlor owner. He's going to tell you his story about opening up. All that's coming up right now on I'm Right. When they're busting out the Great Depression and World War II comparisons, that's generally not good. <laughs> Look, what else can we do but laugh at this point in time? Here's where we are. Coronavirus has killed 50-some thousand people. We have 30 million people. It's more than that out of work right now. We are now waking up by the grace of God, and we're starting to realize uh, we can't lock down the country. And so you're starting to see governors like Texas Governor Greg Abbott, we'll get to that in a second, opening things back up again. Governor Kemp out of Georgia, so on and so forth. These are all good things. But if I can give all these politicians, Donald Trump included, a helpful piece of advice, it's this. It's tough to put this genie back in the bottle. I get it. But what you've done, you've all done it. I'm not here to throw any more stones tonight. You've all done it. You're all guilty. This is where we are. You told the American public for, what, two months now? That they are in danger if they go outside. That they are in danger if they don't lock down. Stay home or you're in danger. Stay home or you're going to die. Stay home or you want grandma to die. That's what you told them for two months now. Now, as you open things back up again, you're approaching it actually the exact wrong way. Texas Governor Greg Abbott. I love the guy. Huge supporter. He's going to allow theaters and restaurants and things like that to open up as long as they only operate at 25%. You're sending the wrong message. I understand what you're doing. Well, let's open up slowly. Let's keep it safe. But they even have statements out there like, well, we're going to see if there's a spike. We cannot afford to tiptoe our way back into this thing. We can't afford to dip our toe in the water. Ooh, that's too cold. Let's wait for it to warm up. We have to dive in. The country is being wiped out. We have to dive in. So Governor Abbott, Governor Kemp, President Trump, all of you, pay attention. You have got to change the mindset of the American people right now. That is your goal. Your goal is no longer, well, everybody hide in the house with a mask on in a bubble and be safe. You had better change the mindset by changing your messaging of the American people. You had better tell them we are going to be as safe as humanly possible, but we no longer have the option of living in some kind of risk-free country where everything is safe and fine and everything's going to be fine. If you don't get back out there now and work, if we don't get the economy rolling again, we are heading towards a Great Depression. That is pain like you can't even imagine. So be as safe as humanly possible. We're going to focus on the uh, affected areas. But go. Live your life and go. That is the messaging you need to hear from politicians across this country. We cannot do this thing where we're, ooh, let's just see. I mean, I guess it's, is it safe? Should we take another step? All right, let's take one more. Oh, oh that was scary. Let's back up. We can't do that. We cannot do that because you're only continuing to drive home this mindset that it's dark and scary out there. We're all going to die. The world is scary. You are going to die. I promise you, you're going to die. If you can believe it, I'm going to die. I know I find that hard to believe myself. Go live your life. Get back to work. Embrace your liberty again. We cannot become, well, what we are right now. We cannot become the scared suburban housewife society. That's what we are. Don't yell at me. I don't care. It's what we are. I know. I live around all these people. You go, you have a couple beers with some of the neighbor guys, and they're talking about business and how things are down, and we're going over things to the kids. And you go, and the wives show up. And all of a sudden, I don't know about this. This seems unsafe. I saw two teenagers playing basketball the other day. Do you have any essential oils? Stop. These people cannot be the decision makers in the United States of America. Stop. Embrace liberty. Embrace a little bit of danger. Get out there and live your life. All right. Just had to get that off my chest. Here's the White House economic advisor. Again, you have to understand that this is an unprecedented shock to the economy, that we're going to be looking at second quarter negative GDP growth that's you know, probably 
you know, north of minus 15, minus 20%. It's the biggest negative shock that we've seen since the Second World War. And, and with that kind of an emergency, the good news is that we've got this bipartisan action that's built a bridge to the other side, but there's still going to be a heck of a lot of problems that pop up. You know, the thing that I think, we were talking about this uh, in the White House on Friday, that's most interesting is that we've got this black swan of this event where we actually have to shut everything down. And the interesting thing is that more or less because of the legislation that's been passed on a bipartisan basis, we haven't seen 50 other black swans, you know, that it's been kind of the markets have been relatively stable and the people are getting their money and the firms aren't declaring bankruptcy at a rate that you might expect. And so I think that, that we've so far kind of dodged a bullet with that and it means that I think markets are hopeful that we could get the V-shaped recovery that the president uh, is hoping for. But, but there, I, I there again, don't think you get it if we don't have another round of really solid legislation. Okay, that, all that was terrible. I don't know this gentleman. I don't, I don't speak on people I don't know personally, but I will just say that was a string of a minute or two of some of the dumbest, most inaccurate analysis I've ever heard of in my entire life. We don't need more legislation. We certainly do not need more bipartisanship. We've already passed two bipartisan bills and they both sucked and they weren't even close to good enough. Companies are going under at a record pace. We didn't have to do this. This was a choice. Whether you believe it was the right choice or not, let us table this. We had to do it. We had no other choice. Do you know who says that? You know who talks like that? Every losing general in the history of mankind who's ever sat down and penned his memoirs has always just, it's always just been one long book of, I had no other choice. Oh, we had choices. South Korea made a different choice. Japan made a different choice. Sweden made a different choice. We chose this. Again, you can agree whether it was the right choice or not. I obviously disagree. We chose this. And so when you use words like Great Depression, World War II, you chose that. That was an actual choice. Worth it or not, I'm not going to go over that right now. That was a choice. Going forward, we can choose to embrace Democrat policies and bankrupt this nation by continuing to spend trillions of dollars we don't have, or we can choose to unleash America's economic engine and get people back to work and have some actual money for the great grandkids we're all going to have one day, Lord willing. That's our choice now. I will not stand for this. Well, we stopped everything. Thank goodness we did what we did. Oh, 30 million unemployed? Oh, whatever. Have you seen the stock market? Stop with that now. Governor Abbott made his statement. We know that all retail can open up. We need to get back to business, allow everybody to sell their goods at 25%. We know that's not good enough, but if we can do this and prove that we can do it for two weeks, then we can take the next step and open up at 50% capacity. And if we can continue to contain the spread, we can open up all the way. One step at a time, making sure we put safety first. Why do we need safety first? Safety first? Again, that's something a suburban soccer mom would say. That's safety first? What? Nothing great has ever been accomplished in the world by putting safety first. That's absurd. Don't put safety first. Put freedom first. Put prosperity first. And safety, oftentimes comes after that. Do you know what created the greatest healthcare system in the world? I have news for you. It wasn't necessarily the doctors or the nurses. The hospital buildings didn't build themselves. An unbelievable amount of wealth was produced from freedom, dangerous freedom. And now we have nice roads and nice restaurants and nice hospitals. We have great health care. We have this quality of life from dangerous freedom. Do not put safety first. Not in your life, not in your government's life, ever. Put your life first. Get out there and live. All of that may have made you uncomfortable, but I'm right. Now, I understand that you are worried about a virus. Not just coronavirus, all of them. And that's okay, as long as it doesn't paralyze you with fear. What it should do is prompt you to action that doesn't paralyze you. You see, you can live your life and still take steps to protect yourself like Omega XL. 
Omega XL is a natural anti-inflammatory supplement that you can take that strengthens your own immune system. You're not sitting around begging for the newest vaccine or cure. You're strengthening what's already inside of you, that thing inside of you that allows you to fight back against dangerous diseases. Omega XL. And when you go to omegaxl.com slash jesse, you actually get a second bottle free with your first order. So there, your immune system's stronger and you get a second bottle free. Omegaxl.com slash jesse. There's a very strange thing going on right now, and I can't quite wrap my mind around it. The people, especially rich celebrities, rich pundits, politicians who are still getting a paycheck, have somehow turned this open America again movement into a Donald Trump thing, into a political thing. And I'm not sure what they think they're saying. Are Democrats no longer working people? Are all the Democrats still just sitting at home eating caviar and shipping champagne? Is that where we're at now? I have this laundry list of these celebrities that are mocking people who want to get America back to work. They're saying terrible things about them. We have, I'll go down the list here in a second, but let me explain something to Democrats everywhere because I see the politicians doing it too. And I see the pundits who really aren't Democrats, wink, wink. I see them doing this all the time too. Um, working Democrats are starving too. They can't pay their bills. This is not only a Republican problem. And if you think all these reopen America again protests are just substitutes for a Donald Trump MAGA rally, you actually might lose in November. I'm shocked at the idiocy of these people. And maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe that's just the nature of the beast. Maybe that's the nature of being a celebrity. You are rich. You're surrounded by yes men. You're not surrounded by normal people anymore, even if you came from those circumstances. So you think everybody who stands up and parades in front of a governor's mansion and says, uh, I'd love to go back to work. Well, look at that idiot Trump supporter. He must be a Nazi. I, I, bet, he, I bet he flies the Confederate flag. I mean, th these people are absolutely out of touch, extremely, and it's bad. And I would recommend especially if you're someone who wants your party to take back the White House, maybe the Senate in November, I would recommend dialing down on the mocking everybody who isn't living in a luxurious mansion, eating grapes from the Swedish bikini team. Most people are stuck in an apartment they can't afford. They're staring at the bills piling up. The bank account reads zero. The kids are driving them crazy. It's really, really bad out there. This is not a left versus right thing. And you know, I'm as partisan as partisan gets. I'm, I'm never afraid to play the partisan card. I'm far right and I can't stand the left. Totally admit it. This situation we're in right now, this crosses party lines. This is a class war now. And I don't like that class war stuff. It's the rich guy against the little guy. I don't have any problem with anybody. But if you or some person sitting on your rear end in your mansion getting driven to and from work, you're doing Skype interviews on MSNBC every night, you still haven't missed a paycheck, at least be aware enough to know um, that's not everyone else's situation. And that's not a Republican thing. That's not a Trump thing. That's reality. Here's Howard Stern. Quote, I would love it if Donald would get on TV and take an injection of Clorox and let's see if his theory works. Hold a big rally and say, F this coronavirus with all of his followers and let them hug each other and kiss each other and have a big rally and all take disinfectant and all drop dead. Now, I understand. That's Howard Stern. I'm not going to get wrapped up too much about Howard Stern. He's made a real nice living doing things like that, saying things like that. But I will just say this is a theme I'm seeing here. You're Howard Stern. You've done real well for yourself. Good for you. Not begrudging you that. I hope you make all that money two or three times over again before your life ends. Good for you. But be aware enough to know people screaming that they have to go back to work aren't all Trump supporters. Some of them are, yeah. But that's the working class, brother. 
That's who helps make this country go. The View, this Sunny Hostin, or Hostin, I don't know how to say her name because I don't watch The View because I'm not a chick. She thinks she knows what's going on. This president, um, their lives become endangered because of the information that he is putting out. And, and, and so, right. you know, the people that are flanking him um, are, are also complicit at this point, like the Dr. Burks's yeah. that aren't and saying anything. Yeah, that, what? I mean, what, what is wrong? Would they rather Donald Trump doesn't talk to any doctors? This is not a Trump problem. This is not a Trump supporters problem. Everything that happens is not about Donald Trump. If you can't get through your day without mentioning the name of the president of the United States, you're the one with the problem. All right. It's not, it's not only limited, by the way, to shock jocks. It's not only limited to the view. This is the sports world. Listen to this. These folks are, let's be honest about what they are. They are the Fox News, Nazi Confederate, death cult rump of the Republican Party. And their very existence is a slap in the face. Hmm, that's great. Um, he's talking about the Open Up America protesters, by the way. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. He's talking about people who believe in liberty. He's talking about people who believe the government should not have the right, the authority, to stop you from earning a living. What is wrong with these people? Pat Oswald, though, he may take the title. Comedian, talented, actor, quote, Anne Frank, of course we have to go Anne Frank, spent two years hiding in an attic, and we've been home for just over a month with Netflix, food delivery, and video games, and there are people risking viral death by storming state capitol buildings and screaming open Fuddruckers. Um, some people can't afford Netflix anymore. Most people who are out of work, they can't afford food delivery every single night. You can't, and again, good for you. I'm not begrudging you the wealth and the fame. Enjoy your yachts, man, it's fine. But understand that that's not the norm. My word. Come on back to earth here, people. And oh, in case you were wondering, the tech companies, Facebook, YouTube, they're on a full court press right now to make sure that any information that says anything other than lockdown, 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 they're trying to have it removed, and in many cases, having it removed from the internet. You see, a real expert is one who agrees with everything they believe. If you don't, I don't care if you're a doctor or not, you're just propaganda. Look at this. With these rallies, we're working with governors. When these rallies are violating state shelter in place orders, we're taking those down as well. And we're gonna continue to be very aggressive. They're taking, what? People, if it feels like you, the working man, have been shafted and that all the rich, powerful people who are still eating caviar every night are against you, that's because that's pretty much what it is. And I hate that. Do better. All right. We still have Sarah Gonzalez. We still have several awesome things on the show. Don't go anywhere. Now, you might be stressed. You probably are stressed. I mean, look around you right now. It's a little dark out there and you're probably having trouble sleeping. Now, what happens when you lay down to sleep at night? Do you lay down to sleep at night and you're having trouble sleeping and think to yourself, oh, what I need is, I, I haven't taken enough pills, or I, I need a new mouthpiece. No, this can't turn off. I go through the same thing. You lay down and it's coronavirus, it's work, it's kids, it's the, it's the wife, it's the, the, what's the dog doing, it, it's everything. You need to find a way to slow down the stress that happens up here, and Ebb Sleep has your solution. It's wearable. It provides continuous cooling to your forehead area, cooling down that stress, putting you to sleep faster, keeping you asleep longer. And if you go to tryeb.com slash jesse, that's E-B-B, by the way, tryeb.com slash jesse, and you use the promo code jesse, you get 25 bucks off your ebb sleep. Go start sleeping again. You need it right now. We got tough times. You need your sleep. Tryeb.com slash jesse, promo code jesse.
Joining me now, show favorites. I mean, it's your favorite, not necessarily my favorite. Sarah Gonzalez, host of the news and why it matters on Blaze TV. Speaking of things that aren't my favorite, Sarah, I have the White House economic advisor talking about bipartisanship and how well all this worked and we need to pass a new bill. And I'll tell you, if you listen really closely, that giant sucking sound is going to be our taxpayer money getting shelled out to the states. Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. And I think it's interesting, too. I believe last time I was on your show and I, I, I joined you, we talked about the fact that the states were now coming out and saying, uh-oh, looks like we use too much money. We're going to need some federal money to bail us out of all of our pensions. You know, all of these COVID-19 related things like pensions. Uh, so it's no surprise. It's no surprise to see the Republicans caving. It is, you know, maddening, especially because at the end of the day, Republicans know who else are you going to vote for, right? Republicans, for as bad as they are doing right now with spending and, you know, letting all of these liberal states get away with taking federal funding, even though they should have been balancing their checkbooks in the first place. At the, at the end of the day, we know that Democrats will be 10 times worse. And so they've kind of, you know, I think Republicans know that and they exploit it whenever it's politically expedient for them. I think they're making a mistake there. Sir. And you can tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like Donald Trump and the people close to him have made a humongous error that they can drive this unemployment completely out into the deep end where it is now and still win re-election just because Democrats happen to be insane. I say that is wrong. Donald Trump is the president because of Rust Belt swing voters who voted for Obama then turn around and voted for Trump. And I say we're going to have President Pudding Brain in November if Donald Trump doesn't get the country back to work like now. I, no, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I think that there was a, a portion of time that people were willing to give the president the benefit of the doubt, right? Because you're looking at this virus. It clearly, it came from China. It was nothing that the president did. It's not like he p got us into a, an active war situation, you know, or made a, a, a choice that we just, we, we had the foresight to see and he made the wrong choice. We had a communicable disease that came from another country and he had to deal with it the best that he could. And I think Americans were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt on that. But they can only last for so long before they start saying, okay, now you're continuing to make the wrong decision. You see that over 20 million Americans are unemployed and you're continuing to double down on it. We can't afford this anymore. And so I do agree with you that the president is going to have to show that he can get his act together when it comes to getting the economy restarted again, because I can guarantee you, it will not be back where it was by November. Even though a lot of people are saying that it's like a light switch and it's just going to flip back on, that is not how it's going to happen. And so he needs to start that now so we can have some sort of recovery uh, and be on that track by November. Otherwise, I agree with you. I don't think he stands a chance at winning. Sarah, I live in the great state of Texas. I think you live uh, just south of Texas. But the, the point of it is our governor, Greg Abbott, I, who I like, by the way, I should say I like him, has decided we're going to do this soft reopening. And we're seeing this out of uh, the governor of Georgia. And look, I'm not trying to complain about everything. I'm glad we're opening something. But I think we are making a huge mistake when we continue to tell the scared suburban mom society that we live in that we can do this safety. We can just be safe and we're going to monitor every single case. And as soon as something pops up again, we're going to go hide under our beds again. Unless we change that kind of mindset, we're finished there. We're never going to recover. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with you. You know, I uh, originally, when Governor Abbott came out with his plan, I just looked at the, the headlines briefly, and I said, okay, I'm kind of impressed by this. The more I looked into it, the more I said, you know, this really... For as good as it is that we are doing something, we are reopening something, it really isn't good enough, especially when you think about all of the businesses that, you know, they may make the decision that 25% capacity is just not doable for them, and it's maybe more financially feasible for them to just stay closed the entire time. And you're looking at over 1.3 million Americans now who are, I'm sorry, 1.3 mil, uh, million Texans who are out of work. And that's just not acceptable. And it's not acceptable to just say 25% social distancing oh and by the way hair salons gyms bars and all of these other arbitrary designations are not allowed to reopen you're penalizing people for choosing to go into a certain industry with absolutely no reason rhyme or method behind it it's just absolutely maddening and i agree with you i think that this this will just give the suburban moms more more fire uh underneath them to just tell us that we all need to stay shut in our houses for fear that something bad might happen when they should have known all along that every time you step outside your door here in America, you are assuming risk.
It's just part that of the deal. Fa- I need you to explain the salon for me. How did that even come? How were the salons? Like the last people that get allowed to open. Now, granted, it's much more of a problem for you than it is for me because my hairline is retreating back towards my ears like the Italian army. I, have, I don't hardly have this problem at all anymore. You, however, I'm sure still have to go. Is this yeah. not a safe environment where you stand there and things are disinfected and people wash their hands and they do the little snip snip thing and whatever it is you women do and you go on about your day? How is this a dangerous environment? I'm lost about this. How did the salons get chucked under the bus? That's what's so frustrating about these arbitrary designations. And, you know, I mean, when you look at essential versus non-essential in the first place, it's really none of the government's business what to deem essential and non-essential because at the end of the day, all jobs are essential when it comes to feeding your family. Every business, every business in my household is essential because it feeds our family at the end of the day. So, you know, you look at the fact that hair salon, uh, you know, people who have gone through cosmetology school, they have far more uh, education on sanitizing things, on keeping workstations clean than the cashier at the liquor store. And the fact that we can go out and interact with the cashier at the liquor store, but somehow not the hair salon owner or the cosmetologist who actually has training in that particular expertise is just mind-bogglingly stupid. Yeah, well, look, I'm best friends with the cashier at my liquor store. Can you break down to people why a restaurant cannot run at 25% capacity, at least not for very long? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're looking at the average restaurant that has a 3% profit margin, I mean, they're, they're barely scraping by every single month. They're barely making ends meet. And you're talking about operating at 25% capacity, so they've got to have their lights on, they've got to have their AC on, they've got to, you know, stock, fully stock for produce and all of their food and, you know, payroll taxes and everything that comes along with paying all of their people. They've got to operate... Uh, paying all of these bills, but they're only getting in 25%, maybe, uh, compared to what they were previously getting. It just, the math doesn't work. They don't make enough profits. They don't have those profit margins to be able to say, okay, we're going to open everything up and pay for everything to be open, but not get that profit in return. It just, the math doesn't make sense. And honestly, it's really frustrating to see this designated by, uh, by bureaucrats because it really makes you wonder, do any of these people have any experience in the private sector, any experience running a business successfully? It really doesn't seem like they do. It doesn't seem like they do. It doesn't seem like the governors do. It doesn't seem like the mayors do. It doesn't seem like, it definitely doesn't seem like the pundits do. And Sarah, I, I don't want to beat this point up too badly, but I've been so disappointed by people, not just the politicians. I know politicians are spineless scumbags. I just accept that. But the people on our own side who have, I mean, friends of mine, who have spent their lives fighting for freedom and talking about business and the economics and the way things work, and all of a sudden a virus pops up and they all just lay down like a bunch of dogs. I, I, I'm shocked. I, I'm not shocked the left sucks. I'm not shocked polit- politicians are all terrible. But the people on our side, man, apparently I had too much faith in them. I, I agree with you. I think it is a sad state of affairs to watch play out right before our eyes. I also think that it really shows uh, you know, how motivating fear is. And unfortunately, yeah. now the left has seen it. And you know what they'll do now that they see it, they will exploit it to the fullest extent that they can. But I mean, I agree with you. I think it's really sad to see fear dominating these people's minds. And, you know, that reason and logic at the end of the day doesn't win out for them if they think something is scary enough. Sarah Gonzalez, host of the news and why it matters on Blaze TV. I always bring out the best dinner. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you. Thank you. We've got more, including a guy who owns a tattoo parlor. It's going to be awesome. Hang on. I don't like politicians. For the most part, I don't like politicians on the left, and I don't like politicians on the right either. There are a bunch of big spending liars who lack the guts to do what is necessary and tell people what is necessary for the most part. There are some exceptions. I'm happy we have them on our show often. But there are few people who remain king scumbag in the politician world like Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio, on top of his horrible rhetoric throughout this whole process, on top of the fact he's done nothing but make his own city less safe, 
Keep in mind, this is a man who decided he was going to keep an eye on Samaritan's Purse, the Christian charity that was setting up hospital tents free of charge to take care of New York City re residents. He was going to keep an eye on them and make sure they weren't being anti-homosexual. Yeah, that's that Bill de Blasio. Turns out he's also a huge hypocrite. Seriously, you guys have a park. You live in the middle of a park. You don't need to not essentially travel to Brooklyn. Come on, you won't even open roads for people of all backgrounds. I'm not going to give it a break. Like th This is selfish behavior. This is so terribly selfish. You call yourself a progressive, but you chauffeur yourself to Brooklyn. You force people to drive you. I like that the guy took the video. I like that we got to play the video. But let me tell you something, brother. They're all like that. Every single socialist ever has been like that. From the worst monsters you can imagine, to the college professor luxuriating on his tenure, making a couple hundred grand a year, telling you how you need to go up and spread the wealth around while he's given 1% to charity. Joseph Stalin. Do you think Joseph Stalin was starving while he starved tens of millions of his own citizens? Chairman Mao, that man of the people. Do you think he was starving? Or do you think they were eating T-bone steaks off a of gold-plated cutlery? People, socialism is always for thee. It's never for me. The climate change nutters, they might be the worst people at it. Who's the biggest climate change guy out there as far as actors go, Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, they, they videotaped him riding around on a yacht for three months as it moved and churned oil into the sky. Mike Bloomberg for the Democrat ticket. He's king climate change, right? You need to cut this. You need to cut that. It's killing our planet, melting the icebergs. Um, Mike Bloomberg has multiple private jets. Mike Bloomberg, he's got yachts and houses. Mike Bloomberg doesn't live how he's telling you how to live. And if you think Bill de Blasio, for one second, feels any obligation to live the way that he's ordering you to live, you've got another thing coming. That's what these people are. It's not just during a COVID-19 lockdown. It's all the time. Socialists don't want to live under socialism. They want to be in charge of it. They want you to live under socialism. This isn't outside of the norm. This is who these people are. Oh, Bill de Blasio, um, that guy who's, who's really concerned about COVID-19, he appointed, <laughs> I'm not even kidding, he appointed his wife as the head of a task force to see if COVID-19 is racist? The COVID-19 crisis in communities of color is real. And it deserves thoughtful leadership and swift action, not unqualified uh, cronyism and nepotism. Uh, New Yorkers know who to trust in turbulent times. Our healthcare professionals, our public policy experts. Uh, instead, we're getting more of the mayor's politics when we can least afford it. Uh, the people of New York City are relying on the mayor to address this issue head on, not play politics with their lives, which is exactly what's happening here. Welcome to New York. Welcome to progressive politics. It's all about politics to them. Of course. And look, if you want to do a deep dive on whether coronavirus affects black people more or men more, apparently most of the people who died from this are men, that's fine. Bodies are made up differently. Different people are made up different ways. That's fine. But Bill de Blasio is playing race politics with it. And of course, of course, he puts his wife in charge. Gosh, jeez. All right. We have the owner of a tattoo parlor, and we have maybe my favorite Biden video ever. Hang on. <laughs> Joining me now is Derek Bunkley, the owner of the Second Skin Tattoo Parlor in Kingsland, Georgia. Are you back to work yet? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We started okay, back last now Friday, sir. Now, was that when the governor turned you guys loose for one? For two, how are things different now than two months ago? Um, 
they did let us uh, <clears throat> they did let us open up last Friday. Um, the only thing that really changed for us is we implemented some more, more rules for health and safety of our customers. Uh, some pre-screening before they come in, ask that they come by their cells. Uh, make sure when they come in, they're wearing a mask. We take them, sanit we take them to the hand washing station, teach them how to wash your hands, you know, stuff like that. How has business been since you've thrown open the doors? I know you have to take some extra precautions, so I'm sure it's not booming. Or is it booming? Are they lined up out the door to get a tattoo? Well, we live in a small, tight-knit community, so um, everybody in town pretty much. I've been here 17 years. Everybody knows who I am, and uh, I've been busy forever, so this really isn't much difference for me. Okay, good deal. What kind of things have you seen locally during the lockdown? I know things are slowly opening back up. What kind of things have you seen? What kind of things have you done as far as people helping out everybody else? Or has there been any of that? Well, when we did, uh, we started off, my tattoo shop, we tried to tr stay very uh, tight with the community. Last year, we paid off the school lunch debt for the entire county. And um, this year, my birthday was on the 28th. So I thought to myself, I was like, you know, Derek, don't go buy yourself a birthday present. So I went and bought like $400 worth of gift cards. And I gave them out to people who wasn't working at the time because all the restaurants were pretty much shut down to, to, to go only. And then uh, I hopped on Facebook and I asked everybody, um, you know, if they want to give me a birthday present, throw me some cash, we'll uh, buy some more gift cards. And we wound up giving out like $3,500 worth of gift cards. And in the last, uh, probably in the last month, we've cooked over two tons of pork and a, a ton of chicken. Uh, made over 10,000 meals to feed the community, um, restaurants, uh, businesses, all stepped in. So, like, it's kind of really weird here in uh, our small town or our, our county because where everybody else in the world is sitting there, you know, complaining about COVID or complaining about that, everybody in our town is pretty much making the extra dinners and giving them to their neighbors who's out of work and making sure everybody has food and doing the right thing. Uh, something about small town America that's pretty great. Although I certainly hope you're not sitting here trying to say that Georgia barbecue, as far as pork and chicken, is superior to Texas barbecue. Well, I did a lot of the barbecue, and I promise it was barely edible, but people were hungry, so they ate it. <laughs> I, I, I would never claim that anybody's barbecue is better than the next man's, but, you know, when you're hungry, barbecue's barbecue. That is a fact. What has been, and not as a small towner, not as a tattoo guy, as a business owner, what's been your overall impression of federal, state, local, of all this lockdown stuff? I've been pretty vocal about the fact that I think it's madness. Do you think it's smart? you think it was the way to go? you think it's absolutely insane? Where are you at with all of it? I'm going to be dead honest. Um, this is something that I don't think that had to happen. I don't think that the country had to go on a lockdown. Everything that's happening is pretty much common sense. Um, you know, we've been locked down for a month, and in that month, Walmart ain't stopped. You know, these big corporations have not stopped, and the people who are suffering are small business owners and uh, people pretty much at the bottom of the food chain. And there was, there really isn't a lot of need for it because the things that they're asking things people to do now is just have common sense. Make sure you make good decisions. If you go to a restaurant, it looks busy. Go home and make a peanut butter sandwich. Mind your business. Don't do nothing dumb. So it really should have been that hard in the first place. But it, usually when people get involved, it gets a little bit more difficult. That is a fact. Look, you don't have to twist my arm to eat a peanut butter sandwich. Have you known any small businesses there locally that have gone belly up for good? Don't think they're going to be able to open again? Um, I don't particularly know any that's gone belly up for good. But I do know it has put a deep struggle on a lot of small businesses. Um, it's unemployment rates are at, at a ridiculous amount. You know, I don't think we've been had this much unemployment since the Great Depression. Um, they've got the highest number of unemployment. They they're not getting their uh, they're filing for unemployment unemployment, but they're not getting unemployment. So you know, you're talking about a, a, a portion of our community that has gone without for a month and a half, but we expect everything to be okay. So you know. We, get, we kind of got to do something different. We got to start looking out for each other. Is there any talk locally about the constitutionality of all this, the liberty aspect of it, of, of governors, mayors, federal government pointing at people and saying, get back inside or, or we'll place you under arrest? No, nobody's acted like that. Um, I think the biggest thing, 
it's really hard to judge off of Camden County because Camden County has through this whole thing in all honesty has probably been a very rare spot and this has been a community of helping each other and nobody's been doing a lot of finger pointing or blaming or anything like that you know there's a lot of people that are very anxious to get back to work there's a lot of people who want to be at work that are sitting at home going well why can't I work you know all these other things can happen around me, but why can't I work if I'm responsible with working? Derek Bunkley, Second Skin Tattoo Shop. Appreciate you very much, sir. Thank you so very much. You have a great day, sir. You too. How about that? All right. We got one more. Hang on. We cannot forget to do our daily check-in on Vice President Biden and how well he's doing. Let's just say he has a plan and he thinks we need to bang it out. I would, I would get much more engaged in the world. We can't step back. If, in fact, for example, we solve the problem in the United States of America and you don't solve it in other parts of the world, you know what's going to happen. We're going to have, you're going to have travel bans. You're going to not be able to do, have, have economic intercourse around the world. That's true. If we don't, we're screwed. All right. We'll do it again tomorrow.